What's going on guys? This is the Full Stack Bro coming at you with another video today. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about why people fail to code. Now there's many different reasons why this happens. It, it could be just being discouraged about writing code in the first place, figuring out what exactly what you wanna do, if, especially if you're a beginner. There's so many different languages out there that you could potentially use, but it's hard to understand exactly <laughs> what you need to focus on and what's the most important language out there that makes sense to you. I'm going to talk about the five reasons why people fail to code and how you could stop those habits so that you can actually get better. And the first thing that's on my list here today is, you know, you're skipping the, fun the fundamentals. Now, when you start first start something, you have to start with the fundamentals. I don't care what it is. It doesn't matter if you're learning something new, if you have some type of experience with it and you looked at YouTube videos of like other people writing code and get a, a understanding of how the code works, you have to have a foundation. You have to understand the fundamentals to its core. If you don't understand the fundamentals, you're going to run into rookie mistakes. You're going to create those mistakes. You're going to run into a bunch of failures and errors and you're going to be discouraged. So understanding the basics, understanding how things work, in conundrum to the bigger picture, that's gonna help you set a foundation and is gonna set you up for success in the long run. So my advice to you is to look at the languages that you wanna learn, focus on one language at a time, maybe spend one to two weeks on one language. Once you get a good understanding of the key concepts, move on to that next language that you wanna learn, so on and so forth. I recommend that you keep at least three languages as your main languages. And then you could branch off into other languages and learn different things. But you wanna have your three main core languages that is always gonna help you with solving a problem. Reinventing the wheel and trying to look into another language unless you really know that this will solve multiple problems that you're trying to solve, go for it. But if it doesn't, scratch it, right? Spend time on the on the core foundations and you should be OK. The second thing is the lack of practice. Why are you not practicing? You should be practicing. If you're a beginner, you should be practicing at least an hour a day um, and build up to an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. That's going to help you retain more information and be better at coding and solving problems. Build small projects, start building like a landing page, for example, right? For web development, build a simple landing page the core languages that you need to learn is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Do the bare minimum. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you do the bare minimum, that's going to help you branch off into different areas and try to think outside the box a little bit in terms of how you can make that landing page look a little bit better. How to make it more responsive, right? Are you going to use a Flexbox grid? Are you going to use a grid system? As long as you understand the key differences between a Flexbox and a grid, and how they're used in HTML and CSS, you should be in a good spot. And then also how to use JavaScript. If you're trying to create a workflow on the landing page, say for example, you have a form on that landing page and you want people to fill out this form and send that information to a database or anywhere else, right? You need to understand how forms work. What happens when you click a button, right? To submit that form, are there validation checks? Are you gonna be sending that information to an API? Are you gonna be sanitizing some of that information that's already in there. These are some of the things that you need to learn so that you could become better and more proficient. So practice is key. Do not sit there and not practice every single day. The third thing is your lack of problem solving skills. Now this comes with practice. Solving easy problems is gonna help you in, in the beginning. OK, as a beginner, but as you become intermediate and then you become an expert, now you got to start to dive into more complex problems. The way you could go about solving complex problems is to look at ChatGPT, right? Go to ChatGPT, ask for suggestions, look on forums for different things. You could actually go on YouTube and do a web tutorial. You could do that. Look at how the web tutorial is set up and just figure out how to solve a particular problem. Say, for example, in the web tutorial, you were able to call an API to scrape a website, right? And get that information to display it in your app. What are some of the ways you can make that better? What kind of data do you want to get from that web scraper, right? 
Is there any other particular data that you might not necessarily care about, but you want to create other landing pages so that it flows in a certain way? How do you page through, say like if you had a thousand rows of data and there's probably like a million rows in this table that you're getting from the API, but it's capped at a thousand, how would you go about paging through that data? Okay. So understanding the key concepts and also how to solve problems and make, make sure you do the hard things is going to help you get better at coding. And it's going to not deter you from failing every single time. Now, failing at coding is not a big deal. Okay. Everybody fails when they're first time coding. I've failed multiple times writing out different applications, different features. And what I had to do was sit there and try to figure out a solution to the problem. Once I figured out a solution to the problem, I was able to tackle other problems that came up and made it super easy for me to become more productive and just get problems done in a more well-fashioned manner. Just make sure that you practice solving problems, no matter if it's easy or hard. Just get into that habit of solving problems. The fourth thing, your <laughs> lack of patience. You're not patient enough. You're not patient in terms of working towards coding a solution or building something. And after a week, if it doesn't work out, you just give up on it. This takes time to learn how to code. It takes a lot of time to learn how to code. So spend at least a week or two coding, get better at it. Then uh, just keep that cadence to where if you want to continue to solve problems and figure out how to go about learning different languages at a time, you have to spend time coding. You have to spend a lot of time just sitting there being patient and just working with the process. Trust the process, guys. You have to trust the process. If you are discouraged by errors, look up what the error is, ask AI, figure out what the solution is, and then try your best to solve these problems and know in the back of your mind that you know you could solve the problem. That's ultimately what's gonna happen. Lack of patience is just going to discourage you and you're always going to fail. If something doesn't go your way after like a week or two and you just give up on it, you could have been a day or two to solve that problem and it would have been easy for you to, you know, get back on track. Don't be discouraged. This is the long game. You have to, there's no easy way to learn how to code fast. It's going to take some time. So just remember, like for me personally, it took me a long time to get to where I am today. It took me a long time to become a full stack developer. And a lot of that was because of just sitting there and being patient. Like I fell so many times and I had to learn from my mistakes and I got back on a horse and I kept going. Last thing is unrealistic expectations. You expect to be a developer in a week. So you can't go from a beginner to a junior developer in one week. There's, there's no way. What you need to do is have realistic expectations. At least three to six months, you could become an entry level developer. After that, then, you know, depending on how much work you put in, you could get to a better level. You just have to make sure that you're doing the projects. You got to make sure that you're solving the problems. Any project that comes your way, you can't shy away from it. If you shy away from it, that's going to be an issue. You're not going to grow. So projects in itself are the keystones to becoming better as a developer. Failing is part of the game. You're gonna fail multiple times, like I said. As long as you have small little wins, right? So if you solve one problem that trickles down to the other, you're making progress. You're making good progress. If it's something hard, just stay confident that you could do it. And if you need help, ask for help. So that's it, guys. That's the video. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know. If these top five reasons why you're failing the code is what you're going through right now and whether the solutions that I talked about today has helped you. All right. Talk soon.